Uh, as the Kansas City squad takes down the Titans 20 to 17 in overtime, I thought the entire game the Chiefs were going to lose this one. And, and just when we thought that we have seen everything imaginable out of one single player named Patrick Mahomes, every ridiculous thing you could possibly do on a football field, he keeps somehow finding ways to surprise me. He did it himself, okay? We've seen him lead a miraculous comeback before, but he did it last night with over 500 yards of offense by himself. 444 through the air, another 63 on the ground, including, of course, the game-tying touchdown run. Uh, and in what was just another remarkable comeback, you can't just heap it on the, the pile of those that he has because this one is special as this one is showing us that he can do it without Tyreek. And I've already said he doesn't need Tyreek. He doesn't need him this year. But in a lot of those comebacks on that huge pile that uh, has accumulated for Patrick Mahomes and company, it usually is Tyree Kill coming and making some big play. It's, oh, they, they don't have him. Nobody will be there to make that play. And they didn't need him. They crushed it, and he crushed it specifically. We're not just going to give him credit, of course, because it's beyond Mahomes and the offense. It's the defense that deserves some up and Adams love today. Check this out. The offense was struggling to get going. Casey's defense kept them in it. They were, were shredded by Derrick Henry and Malik Willis in the first two quarters. What, what did Spags do? I don't know. Win in that locker room? A a cheeseburger with Andy Reid. They came out and they allowed just 22 total yards in the second half. How about that? Buying Mahomes and company their chance to get it together and get back in the game. That is as good a second half performance as you will see out of a defense. Bags and company, we see you. And of course, I'm very interested in the Malik Willis of it all. Uh, so credit to the Titans and Vrabel giving this squad all they could handle. The defense, spectacular most of the game. And I do think that Malik sort of showed some signs of growth, especially in the first half. Ultimately, the Chiefs seem too much to handle uh, with Mahomes under center and the defense playing the way that it turned out playing. So Kansas City now moves to 6-2, and two, I believe. And that number one seed in the AFC is still very much back in play for them after Buffalo's loss yesterday afternoon. Okay, what is happening in studio right now? <laughs> There's a lot of movement. There's what is there? Are we okay? Is there some imminent danger I'm in? Is it have to do with the rain? No. Are we? Oh, is the lighting? What is it? Okay. What are you telling me? <laughs> Something is happening. I need to hear from you guys at Up and Adam Show. Uh, and I'm smiling. Listen, I like to smile. I want to have a good time. And so I'm done talking about the Packers because I like having a good time. And here's my takeaways from yesterday's action, 59. <sighs> a loss to the Lions. I knew they were gonna lose going into it. I like to be positive. I like to swim in that side of the pool. I like to, you know, I like the party of it all. Uh, I like to highlight the good things teams are doing rather than spend time week after week talking about all of the Packers' missteps, their mistakes uh, that they've made up to this point, most self-inflicted especially when they're not going to listen to anyone by trying to make it better anyway. You, oh, well, I don't want to get into this. You have five plays inside the five yard line early. Why would you give the ball to Aaron Jones? Why would you do that? He's only the best weapon you have on offense. Let's just throw three interceptions in the end zone instead. And now Jones hurt, Dobbs hurt, Watson and Gary, Gary's hurt bad. And I just can't do it anymore. And the schedule makes it easy to make this statement that I'm making because it's not fun. Cowboys, woof. Titans, woof. Eagles, woof. Packers, you are three and six, woof. And listen, when I watched this game yesterday, I thought I put myself in Odell Beckham Jr. shoes, who's bell of the ball, he can probably go wherever he wants. The schedule, mm? the record, mm? I think there was a good chance because Aaron Rodgers is as good of a player, a prolific player, best in the game, uh, two-time MVP, I think very charming, can get on the phone and talk to Odell and get him interested in coming there. I don't know, I think it's too late. I think Odell now, he might answer the phone and listen, but I do not think it's anywhere near the top of the pecking order in, in favorable landing destinations for Odell's services. It's too late. Uh, and there was so much yesterday. Uh, we tried to get this guy out of that front office in Green Bay, and we were in the mix for Chase Claypool. Those are fails. Those are fails all around. And then, you know, there's the how do we handle this selfishly on this show because we love to be positive, and we only have 48 minutes every day to divvy up the focus on storylines that we want to talk about, ones we need to talk about, ones that make an impact. And I just think I'm done with the Packers right now. 
and there's more useful discussions. My words are not lost on things like this. Because I said, run the ball. I said, give Aaron every weapon he wants. So here's more impactful discussion. I, mean, I could sit here and talk about the detailed meaning of daylight savings time, which, does anybody even know what happens anymore? Because you don't change clocks. Remember to change your VCR when you're a little Marissa, you're too young to remember that, gosh. Uh, how to properly care for and treat toenail fungus. Like that could, if we went into that on the show, we could help someone out there. Yeah. Every single shot from producer Brian's round of golf this weekend. Humble brag. How'd it go? A lot, of, okay, well. See, I, I don't really wanna hear about him. My kidney stone. That could be more useful than me sitting here talking about the Packers and what they needed to do, what they need to do, and whether or not they could turn around. How about describing social media to my grand aunt, great aunt Ethel? And TikTok, no, no, Ethel, it's not candy. Let me explain TikTok to you. How about the process of rebuilding a carburetor? Is that how you spell carburetor? That's literally no way. No chance that's how you spell carburetor, really? Oh, I'd be knocked out of round two of the spelling bee for sure. Uh, on a lawnmower, great, I, yeah, great. I once changed a water pump in a 1996 Nissan Altima. I could do that, I could tell you things. I'm Tim the Toolman Taylor, the Bimford 5000. How about how a bill becomes law in the United States government? Very topical, very on trend, very necessary for tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it's more useful to talk about every single species of bird in existence on this planet than it is right now to talk about the Packers, how they repair it, what they do. Now there's, now there's injuries, now there's the schedule. And now I'm looking at this squad and I want to be wrong. And I hope you prove me wrong, of course, that's why I'm doing this. But you're on your way to a top 10 pick next year where you're likely to choose another cornerback uh, and this vein in my forehead will protrude like a Blinken does on the penny. It'll just pop right out and be out there for the rest of time with this Packer squad. Um, it could change. I love Green Bay, want it to work out, want to live in the positive. I'd like to hear from you guys out there watching at Up and Adam's show. Am I being too harsh? I don't think anyone's gonna say I'm being too harsh on this team because it's not injuries, it's not, you You know, it's decisions that were made and most of it self-inflicted. And then you got Adams out there just thriving on a losing situation. Ugh, it's just a mess, it's a mess. All right, uh, on to more positive things. I like this one. Tua Tungavailoa officially needs to move to the front and center of the MVP conversation. Thus at it, Tua racked up over 300 yards, three touchdowns. The Dolphins won yesterday, 35 to 32. Win at Chicago. Chicago gave them hell all they could. Justin Fields looked awesome, but the Dolphins are now undefeated. Get this, six and zero when he starts and finishes the game and are now just a half game back of Buffalo for the AFC East lead. And his numbers have been zany, absurd. He is leading the NFL in passer rating and yards per attempt this season, which showcases not only how efficient this quarterback is, which is what we always thought he could be, but also his ability to do something that everyone thought that he couldn't in the big leagues, hit those deep balls that everybody said, oh, he can't do it, I've not seen it. Oh, I love when players shut people up. And I think it was one of my bold predictions heading into the season, the day the show started, that Tua is going to shut people up. And he's also uh, beaten the favorite for MVP. That's, that's a great thing in his argument here. If you're making the case for Tua, he beat Josh head to head. And I know that the arguments, because that's what you do when you say something like this, you have to say, well, what are people gonna come at you with? And they're gonna say, how can you give him the MVP? He missed games. That's exactly why you give him the MVP or why he has to be in the conversation because the Dolphins' miserable performances were when he was out with that concussion and that only serves to make the case that much stronger. It has proved how valuable he is, how important he is to said team. Uh, it isn't just Mike McDaniel. You can't say it's the speed. You can't say it's Waddle. You can't say it's Tyke Reed. He is the point guard that is making it all work. So there's a lot of season left. I'm not saying he is the MVP, but I'm saying uh, that he needs to be in the mix and thought of that. That way, of course, Marissa, I have your computer and I need you to log in. Uh, yeah, I think it's time for critics to sort of lay off him and uh, uh, swallow their preconceived notions about it and admit that maybe they were wrong about Tua and he's having such a special year. And speaking of Tua, dun, 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 thank you, Marissa, you're beautiful and I love you and I'm sorry about the Astros winning. No one wanted the Astros to win. No one except for Kate Upton, who Kate Upton, like, all for supporting your, your, your man, but, like, read the room. There's a reason people don't like the Astros. To say we don't know why, what are we doing? Anyway, don't put that on Twitter. I don't need that smoke this morning. And speaking of Tua, uh, I wanted to get into the AFC East, which has gotten very interesante. Uh, I said it before, Dolphins are a half game back of Buffalo. After beating the Bills yesterday, so are the Jets. How about, it's amazing. And then, look. 
the daylight savings time happens and everyone's slipping their clocks back and it's raining and I'm cold and what happened? New England's performing. Something happened. November, that Bill Belichick gets some grinding. They're sitting there at five and four up there with the Patriots. The clocks get turned back. It happens and this coach, say what you want about him, grinds out wins, refuses to give it away. The division, the whole point of this, don't look now. Hey, Bubba. The division is wide open thanks to the Jets. And this has been so fun to watch. The first half of the season is over. And the Bills, of course, overwhelming favorites, probably going to win it all, probably will take the East. Uh, as it should be. It should have been easier, though. And it's important to note they are 0-2 in the division. Did you know that, Brian? I'm aware. The what, the okay, okay. And I think a lot of people are penciling them in to be the number one seed and go to the Super Bowl. A lot of work to be done, though, here for those Buffalo Bills. Um, but however it shakes out, so fun. So fun to watch these four teams. They've been sitting with winning records. Nobody thought that about the AFC East, so uh, it's all good times.